day ladies and gentlemen thank you for the well wishes and as you can see the simple thing of a baby sneezing in my mouth has turned into a plague of yah against me for exposing these fallacies that we have been taught saying that Today's video will cover the geopolitical environment of Jerusalem during the Walk of the Anointed One. I figured, how can you understand the story if you don't have all the pieces to the puzzle? In this case, the ingredients for the cultural cataclysm that we all know follow. Thus, the reason for the timing of the Anointed One's confirmation. I also would like to send out a universal scribe signal to help me figure out a conundrum that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. But because the strength of her witchcraft is so strong over the New Testament, check this now, we all have used it for other reasons. But now that we all have a different perception, let's see if it now changes how we look at it now. Saying that, let's start this journey of history and understanding, shall we? According to Wikipedia under Herodian Tetrarchy, T-E-T-R-A-R-C-H-Y, Quote, the Herodian Tetrarchy was formed following the death of Herod the Great in 4 BC, when his kingdom was divided between his sons as an inheritance. Stop! That should have made every red-blooded Israelite mad as hell. Herod the Great was a freaking Edomite, not Israelite. And for this type of disrespect, our ancestors hated Herod and his court. And as you will soon see, there were three Herods ruling in and around Jerusalem at the exact same time. Let's continue. Quote, Judea, the major section of the Tetrarchy, was transformed by Rome in 6 CE, abolishing the rule of Herod Archelaus and forming the province of Judea by joining together Judea proper, Samaria, and Idumea. Stop. Again, I ask. Can someone, anyone, give me even a rumor of the history around the Edomites in Idumea after Jerusalem was sacked and raised? Can anyone? I got 94 cents waiting for you when you do. I can tell you where they went and currently are through the scriptures. It's easy as I don't know what. Here's just one. If the anointed one is prophesied to come from Edom drenched in blood, well, let's read it, shall we? Quote, Who is this that come from Edom with red garments from Basra, Mount Sierra, thus fair in his apparel with mighty strength? I speak of righteousness and saving judgment. He's about to ask a question. Wherefore are thy garments red and thy raiment as if fresh with a trodden wine press? Here comes the answer. I am full of trodden grape, and of the nations there is not a man with me. And I trample them in my fury, and dash them to pieces into the earth. For the day of recompense has come upon them, and the year of redemption is at hand. Example. This can only mean Esau has to be in Basra at the present. But anyway. The reason why Rome finally combined the two territories together is because Herod Archelaus was very cruel in nature and Rome kept getting complaints. For preventive measures, you know, didn't want to get the colors all riled up. Rome replaced them. When we start to read this stuff, I want you to understand the heart of the Israelite at the time, having not only pure Gentiles ruling over them by force, the Gentiles had the audacity to put Esau, Esau of all people, over his brother, as though they were trying to right a perceived wrong from way back. I'm talking about Esau selling his birthright. But let's continue. Quote, However, other parts of the Herodian Tetrarchy continue to function under Herodians. Say it again. However, other parts of the Herodian Tetrarchy continue to function under Herodians. Stop. According to Wikipedia under Herodians, I'm cutting to the chase. Quote, it is possible that to gain inheritance, the Herodian party may have been in the habit of representing that the establishment of the Herodian dynasty 
would be favorable to the realization of a theocracy. And this in turn may account for pseudo Tertullian's advertis ominous heresis. Allegations that, get this now, Herodians regarded Herod himself as the Messiah. Stop! So as you can see, Jerusalem was a melting pot of misfits. Now when you read the Herodians being in the cahoots with the Edomite infused Pharisees, you know the deal. Surely you know this couldn't have been a welcome sight for any zealous Israelite. They probably called them the equivalent of a colored lover. And everybody knows, if you want to see a devil materialize right before your eyes, call a pure white Christian man a colored lover. He will be compelled to show you that you're wrong. But let's get back to the original article, shall we? Under history, quote, at the time of his death, Herod ruled over most of the southern western Levant as a client state of the Roman Empire. Antipas was not Herod's first choice of hire, of heir, of heir. <laughs> that honor fell to Aristobulus and at Alexander, Herod's son by the Hasmonean princess, M-A-R-I-A-M-N-E. Stop! First mistake was to convert them. Second mistake was to marry into their bloodline. The Maccabees really messed up bad people. They are nothing to be esteemed. But let's continue. Check out how those in power, owners, high rollers, etc., deal with one another to get and stay on top. Quote, it was only after they were executed, 7 BC, and Herod's eldest son, Antipater, was convicted of trying to poison his father, 5 BC, that the now elderly Herod fell back on his youngest son, Antipas, revising his will to make him Herod. During his final illness in 4 BC, Herod had yet another change of heart about the succession. According to the final version of his will, Antipas' older brother, Archelaus, was now to become king of Judea, Idumea, and Samaria, while Antipas was to rule Galilee and Pieria with the lesser title of Tetrarch. Philip was to receive the Golan Heights, southern Syria, T-R-A-C-H-O-N-I-T-I-S, and A-U-R-A-N-I-T-I-S. Because of Judea's status as a Roman client kingdom, Herod's plan for the succession had to be ratified by Augustus. The three heirs of Herod therefore traveled to Rome to make their claim. Antipas, arguing he ought to inherit the whole kingdom, and the others maintaining that, that Herod's final will ought to be honored. Listen up! Despite qualified support from Antipas, from Herodian members, excuse me, let me say it again. Despite qualified support for Antipas from Herodian family members in Rome, let me say it again. Despite qualified support for Antipas from Herodian family members in Rome, who favored direct Roman rule of Judea because, but considered Antipas preferable to his brothers, Augustus largely confirmed the division of territory set out by Herod in his final will. Stop. Do you see how these Gentiles and Edomites have taken Yah's kingdom into possession and divided it up among the wicked? But that's not the real reason why I stopped this though. I want you to put an asterisk next to, quote, despite qualified support for Antipas from Herodian family members in Rome, part of what we just read. If I'm reading this correctly, there were qualified family members, meaning high-ranking members of the Herodian family living in Rome at the time. May I ask you a question, gentle strangers? Something has been nagging at me since I started these series, and maybe we have a tidbit of information to answer it. See, Paul told us he was from the tribe of Benjamin, right? Who confirmed that? What I mean is, we see the Herod family had family. We see the Herods had family in Rome, right? And the real Israelites hated the Herod regime, right? Okay, so can somebody explain why Paul said this? Quote, 
and Romans 16 and 11. Romans 16 and 11. Quote, Salute Herodian, my kinsmen. Greet them that be of the household of narcissists which are in the Lord. I'm going to read that again. Romans 16 and 11. Salute Herodian, my kinsmen. Greet them that be of the household of narcissists which are in the Lord. Example. Herodian? My kinsman? It was just a question. I didn't mean nothing by it. But I want you to keep it in mind for my scribe signal. Let's continue. Quote, Archelaus had, however, to be content with the title of E-T-H-N-A-R-C-H, which is a governor, rather than king. In a turbulent period of history, the rule of the Tetrarch was relatively uneventful. The most trouble fell to Archelaus, who was faced with sedition by the Pharisees at the beginning of his reign. Sounds like they were Antipas backers, don't it? And crushed it with great severity. After ruling for 10 years, he was removed by the Emperor Augustus in 6 CE, following complaints about his cruelty and his offenses against the Mosaic law. Stop. So as you can see, the Edomites were cruel and they didn't care about our walk of life at all. This could only mean, well I'm talking about the higher ups, this could only mean for an Israelite to be associated with someone of Edomite stock would have been shameful in the eyes of the majority. Let's finish this section out, shall we? Quote, Philip ruled I-T-E, excuse me, I-T-U-R-A-E-A. -E and the T-R-A-C-H-O-N-I-T-I-S until his death in 34 CE when he was succeeded as Tetrarch by Herod Agrippa I who had previously been ruler of Chalcis C-H-A-L-C-I-S Agrippa surrendered Chalcis to his brother Herod and ruled in Philip's stead on the death of Herod Antipas in 39 CE Herod Agrippa became ruler of Galilee also, and in 41 CE, as a mark of favor by the Emperor Claudius, succeeded the Roman prefect Marlus, M-A-R-U-L-L-U-S, as ruler of Judea. With this acquisition, the Herodian kingdom of the Jews, the what? The Herodian kingdom of the Jews, fuck you. Let me read it. The Herodian kingdom of the Jews was nominally reestablished until 44 CE. Though there is no indication that status as a providence was suspended. Let me read that part again. Though there is no indication that status as a providence was suspended. Stop! I told you there was something fishy about Eden and being erased from history when we were deported. They were never decommissioned as the rulers of Israel, Samaria, or Idumea. Now that we see the action of the Gentiles towards the Israelites, let's look at the reaction that it caused. 